Hey everybody, so in today's video, I'm going to be back in this Kawasaki. Uh, I've I spoke about in previous videos about installing interior lights and that's what I plan to do today. So with that, let's go over what I'm planning on doing. As discussed in the, in the previous video, I'm going to be installing these LED lights. I'm going to put a link in the description below, but I'll, I'll discuss this again. All right, give you a little better detail again. These are potted on the back. As you can see, they're potted. I think it's actually silicone that's in the back of these. Nice design because all you got to do is drill a single hole, tighten up the nut, put a little Loctite on it. I would. I'd put a little Loctite on it, and that'll keep it from back and back out. It, it produces a decent amount of light, and that's an easy install and an easy application for light. Um, so it comes in a 10-pack, like I said. I think the only thing I'm gonna really need is gonna be some tie wraps, some electrical cable. I picked this up from uh, Lowe's. It is a direct burial cable. Uh, it's, there's better stuff out there uh, for this, but I think for this application, this will be fine. It's, uh, I forget the gauge. I think it is 16 gauge uh, direct burial cable. And you know, one side will be marked, if I can show you. One side is smooth, the other side has some ridges on it. So like that, so you'll be able to distinguish when you run them, which one which one will be positive, which one will be negative. Uh, and the only other thing I'll need is crimps to, uh, to uh, connect into the uh, bus bar that I have underneath the hood, which in the other video I talk, uh, showed the install, and then the switch is already wired to that bus bar. So all I have to do is use, actually, these spade terminals here. Sorry, spade connectors, and they just look like this. That's all you have to do, and I think that's gauge 22 to 16, so it worked perfectly. Uh, with that, I am going to show you where I'm going to be installing it. Uh, as stated before, there's not a whole lot of uh, light in here. Actually, there's zero light in here, so there's nothing in here for lighting. So looking at the top part up here, one thing I've noticed is there's these bars, these cross members for the roll cage, and I've just run these in here just for, you know, seeing if it looks good. I think I'm going to repurpose this, which I believe is a mounting hole for something else, if you know, an accessory or something. So I'm going to repurpose that hole. For this one, same thing on the other side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up taking this roof, at least the front portion off, because it bolts on with like U-bolts here. Take this, disconnect those, disconnect this part of the uh, roll cage so it gives me access in here so I can tighten this up, put like tight on it, and then uh, run wire through. So what I'm gonna do for that side over there, I'll run it down and across and through there, go underneath here. This one I'll run through here, down here, and then it will pop in. Right through here, there's a nice little pocket that you can go down through and then pop back out and run it right into the bus bar right here. So that makes it nice. So I have two connections, one going passenger side, one going driver side. And then for the bed of the truck or the, the side by side, I'm going to install one here that'll be facing down on that strong member and that one will be facing down as well. So I'll just drill a hole right through here and then I'll make the connections and I'm gonna run it and, and jump it right off there and then just string it across through there with tie wraps. So it should be fairly straightforward. Just a little you know, work to make them look nice and then that's it. So you're figuring this out with me as I go. Uh, so one thing I noticed is right here, uh, no different here, no change here. But one thing I did notice is I, I should have thought about this is when I, this is where it bolts into. So that must be closed. And the only thing I can think of is I can either do one of two things. I can either thread this hole, which that's gonna be a lot easier than anything else. Thread that. I don't have the right threads for it, of course. This is, it's metric. The uh, LED is a metric threading and I have only SAE stuff. Um, so that's one idea. The other idea is I can drill this hole out a lot larger and then be able to get some kind of wrench down through there, but I don't think I'll be able to do that in all honesty because I have to have, I can't do it as a socket, I have to use a wrench. I don't think I can do that. So I think I'm basically delegated or not delegated. So I think I'm just resigned to the fact that I'm just going to have to thread that hole and that's going to have to be how that goes in there. Uh, so with that, I am going to go find a thread that's as close as possible to it. There's not a lot of uh, metal there and there's no stress on it on the uh, LED. So it should stay with, uh, with Loctite uh, and with not having a lot of thread there, the mismatch and thread should be okay for that. So with that, let me show you what I'm working So here is the LED as I've shown you before, the threads on it. Here's my kit from Harbor Freight. 
He's the closest one I can look that will look like it will be this the fine thread, and this is uh, what does it say it is? If I can get it to it is a three eighths by twenty four. That looks close, and then this one also looks pretty close. That looks like a eighth by twenty seven. And when I when I line them two up, which I can't cannot do one, uh, with one hand, is I just you can see the threads there. I line up the threads to see that the peaks touch, and they look like they touch pretty good on both of those. So I'm going to try that, and you will find out with me if that works. So what I usually use, I prefer uh, Loctite in the chapstick form. Uh, it tends to not go everywhere and get all over me. So I find this to be a little bit, it's more, it's like a paste. So it does a good job of not sticking to everything. So I'm going to put this on the top part because this is where it's really going to matter. And you just kind of rub it on there, as you'd imagine, just like you would if you had a, uh, you know, chapstick and rubbing chapstick on there. So this is all I really use for it. I prefer it like this. Okay. Oh no, that didn't work. I, I continued to thread it in there and made the mistake of going too far, of threading it too much. So now it just doesn't fit. So that's, Thanks. so plan B is I'm just gonna drill a hole right here and declare a victory. And that will be my plan. So I'll drill a hole right here and I'll tap it. The problem was I had the choice between two that were fairly close. And the one I chose was incorrect. And it just went right through. This one, uh, I tried it on another hole. It works just fine. So it has a lot better thread match. I think right about there looks good. Perfect. There's that guy. We'll put a pair of pliers and just gently snug that up. Mess it up too much. There we go. That's tight. So this is after the install. The other one, I went ahead and put the other one in as well. I'll put a little black paint in there so we don't have to worry about it rusting. So uh, that's finished with that. The one thing I do have to go do is those are the leads on it, which are very, very small. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna solder on the 16 gauge onto that heat shrink it and then protect this because that is pretty fine wire there and then i'll put a uh, anti-chafe braiding on that and run it up through here and keep it protected all the way through and down through there because that's it does have a jacketing on it that'll keep it protected but the anti-chafe just adds a little uh, protection more so, to it like i said i'm gonna solder on those leads onto transition it onto this this wire uh, i think it'll be a little better and then i can secure it and keep it protected better and then I have some anti-chafe braiding. I think it, make, it makes it look a little cleaner, but it also just adds an extra level of protection for, you know, anti-chafing, right? So it's a fray resistant scissor cut, blah, blah, blah. I got it from uh, McMaster Car. I'll put this part number. I think that's still... Uh, do, 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 do. I'll have to find the part number um, from McMaster Car, but it's quarter inch black, 10 feet section. You can get it from there. I don't know how expensive it was. It wasn't too terribly much. Soldering station I've got set up here. Um, I just, you know... Uh, see what I've got here. I got 60-40 solder, so a rosin core, and then I have a brass wool here to clean the tip on. And that's pretty much all I need. This I'm sealing out of the kitchen, just a little butane torch. Meant to make creme brulees. <laughs> Just take this and you just slide it up over that and you just, it's just a weaving is all it is. And you just kind of. So right here is the splice point where I spliced them in. You can't see anything. And the good thing is there's nothing to catch on it and it can be protected. There, oh, we'll secure that there as it comes out. And so that's the anti-chafe braiding. It goes down, runs through there, through there, and I'll tie wrap that through there. And it goes back. And then I'm going to thread it down through, uh, down through here and then back up underneath. And it'll start going down. Run it right down through there. 
So here's where I'm gonna put the two bed lights. This strong, this basically the support member here and the support member here, it's fairly thick. So I don't think if I drill a little hole in there or drill a hole in there, I'm gonna have an issue. Put one there and the convenient thing is they'll be angled down and toward the bed anyway. So that works out well. So I'm gonna put this camera over so you can see where I'm, uh, from, from the inside of the cab so you get better lighting. anti-chafe running that way on this this one to protect it and then I'll have the the union here and then we'll have one piece running in the other direction it goes all the way back to the engine compartment Let's see so it goes like that so you can Either you can just terminate it like that, which I don't like that. I don't think that looks very good. Or you can create a, bu a bunch of extra slack on it. You just kind of walk your hand up it. It's a lot easier with two hands, you can imagine. And then it bunches up. And then it'll want to fold back on itself. So all you got to do is just see how it starts to fold back. Keep pushing it back. And then it creates a little bit more of a, like I said, a little bit better fit and finish on it. I just took anti-chafe and then I just ran the two together and I flipped it over, like I said, and then I'll put a tie wrap here to keep that this one from going anywhere. And then I'll secure this one all the way across. Press on that. So that kind of keeps, keeps everybody happy through there. Like I said, I've pre-wired this before on another video. And I have them labeled one, two, and three. So basically power input is gonna be one, two, and three. It's coming from the battery, or actually it comes from inside the fuse box. Labeled one, two, three in here. Go to the switches sequentially, one, two, and three on the uh, back interior. Uh, reverse lights, and then these will be I have my, uh, clamp, my clip leads here. Which make it convenient. So like I said, that's my smooth, so that should be my ground. Courage, that should be 12 volts. See if I am lying. Should not be on. Good. It's not on. And it should be on now. All right, so got everything reinstalled, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. And it's kind of dusk out here, so be able to see it, get a pretty good example of what it looks like. So no lights. We have a little bit of light in here, so it's not too bad. But now, plenty of lights. So that's the two lights for the front of the cab. And these are the bed lights. You can see there, shines down the bed, gives you plenty of light in the bed, which works out well. And now I have light in the front area, so that worked out quite well. So that is the finished product. And you can see, there they have, kind of fit right in cover them up, give you an idea. But yeah, fit, pretty good fit and finish, I think. Look nice. That is, it will walk back from it. Gives plenty of light outside, so it's pretty good. All right, everybody, so that wraps the video up for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and subscribe, and you'll get more videos like this. Uh, next up will probably be me working on the uh, rock lights and uh, giving you some more light out to the side. But although i got tons of light now, I'm debating about how many to put out there because they were quite bright just being on the inside. So anyway, like I said, I enjoyed this video and have a good one.